Hello everyone and welcome into today's reaction video. Today we are watching another romance movie, so are you ready? Because I am. Today we are watching Before Sunrise from the year 1995. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, my name is KL, and this corner of the internet is where I watch movies for the first time and I let you know what I think of them. My reactions are a mix of running commentary and me kind of just sitting here digesting and processing what I'm seeing on the screen. I try and react very heavily with facial expressions if I don't know what to say. I do curse sometimes in my reactions, and by sometimes I mean I typically drop a few curse words in every reaction, so just letting you know in case that's not your vibe. I won't be offended if you don't watch because I curse, totally fine. And if you are someone who likes organized breakdown of thoughts and review, I do that at the end of all of my reaction videos. I love sitting here and just getting all my thoughts out. Depending on the movie, I'll chat anywhere between five to 15 minutes and let you know everything that I thought. The reason we're watching Before Sunrise today is because I wanted to. That's the reason. I just wanted to. This was an option in a poll that I put on YouTube for 90s romance movies, but that was the poll that Notting Hill won. And if you haven't seen that reaction, it was the one that I just put out on the channel previously. Click here if you missed it. I decided to add Before Sunrise to the list to watch immediately after Notting Hill. Simply, well, there's a few reasons. One, the one hour, 45 minute runtime is appealing. Short movies are lots of fun. Two, a lot of people like this movie. There were a bunch of you that left comments on that poll post saying that you hope I get to it eventually. One of my good friends loves this movie. I saw how many high reviews and ratings it got. So I figured, you know what? Let's just squeeze this in. Let's get another cool romance movie out of the way before the scary October movies start, which I've got a full lineup for October and I'm so excited. So yeah. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna chill. I don't know if this movie is emotional, teary, hits you in the feels, or if it's more of like a something else, <laughs> but I'm excited to find out. As always, I, I pretty much know nothing about this movie. You all know that I avoid trailers, cast lists, plots, pretty much everything. The only thing I know is that it stars Ethan Hawke. I love him, I think he's an underrated actor, so I'm very excited to watch this. And I also know that this movie is the first of a trilogy, so please comment below. Let me know if I should watch the other two movies. Preferably let me know after you've actually watched this reaction. And uh, maybe I'll add them to the list. And if you are someone who prefers to watch along with me to the entire movie, you can find my full-length watch-along reaction over on my Patreon for just $2 Canadian per month. With that, you also get access to all of the full-length watch-alongs to every movie I've reacted to on the channel. Channel. You do need your own copy of the films for every single reaction because you are paying for the full length reaction of me. I'm the reactor. You're not paying for the movie. You're just paying for me. And depending on the tier that you choose, you can also get access to way more benefits like polls and being able to decide what I watch next on the channel and exclusive reactions. My most popular tiers are the exclusive reaction tiers where I am watching a bunch of TV shows, mostly Star Wars shows at the moment, but I'm also watching House of the Dragon right now. I've watched Stranger Things 4 in its entirety, and we also have a lot of non-Star Wars shows planned. Two big ones, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. I'm not sure when I'm gonna start them. Probably, maybe later this year. It's gonna be a fun time. I'm very excited. So it's the best way to support the channel if you can, and you wanna join our community over there. Link is in the description, pinned comment wherever. And if you want to try before you buy, I do have some reactions available for free. Links are also in the description and in the pinned comment. Come check me out before you sign up. Before I start this movie today, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who watches my videos. Thank you to everyone who likes these videos. Thank you to everyone who leaves comments, especially if they are nice, because I definitely get my fair share of very shitty comments. <laughs> Thank you so much. It really means a lot. When I started this channel, I started the reactions with Star Wars and I knew by doing that I would get a very strong viewer base right off the hop, but I also knew that a lot of those viewers would probably never come back to watch anything else, and that's fine. The very dedicated Star Wars reaction fans are people that will only watch Star Wars reactions and that's it, and they're just on the hunt for new channels, watching them for the first time. And I get it, that's totally fine. But for those of you that have stuck around, for those of you that come back and watch my movie reactions no matter what I'm watching, I just really appreciate it. It means a lot. And I'm hoping that by branching out and getting into some other things that I never would have watched before, and by breaking out of my shell a little bit with movies and just watching a huge variety. I'm hoping that we'll find some new friends through those movie reactions and build a very strong community here. And I'm so excited for that. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you so, so much. And with that, let's press play. Kannst du sie bald auswendig? 
Es wird dich nicht interessieren, aber es steht etwas über dich in der Zeitung. Schau dich doch mal in den Spiegel. Schaust du dich mal in meinen Spiegel? Ich lasse dich so gerne in Ruhe. Aber ich habe einen There is a guy. Dreimal im Monat. Yeah, she's over it. Does she move across? Uh-huh. I figured that would be the case. Do you have any idea what they were arguing about? I'm sorry, my German is not very good. What are you reading? Oh, yeah. How about you? Hmm. Ah, the days before phones and social media and laptops and when you had to pass the time either looking out of the window or reading. Look, I was thinking about going to the lounge car. Would you like to come with me? Yeah. I would love to go on a train like this I one day. Like That's like a dream goal of mine. I knew you were American. And of course you don't speak any other language, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> I get it, I get it. So where are you headed? Well, back to Paris. Uh, my class start next week. Are you coming from Budapest? Yeah, I was visiting my grandmother. How about you? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Vienna. What's there? Uh, I have no idea. I'm flying out of there tomorrow. Huh. You on holiday? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't really know what I'm on. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, <laughs> I'm just traveling around. I've been. He's just vibing. Yeah, I got one of those Uriel passes, what I did. Do those passes still exist? Because that's what I would want. Just travel all of Europe on trains. Sitting, you know, for weeks on end, looking out the window has actually been kind of great. You have ideas that you ordinarily wouldn't have. And I have this idea for this show that would last 24 hours a day for a year straight. Right? What you do is you get uh, 365 people eating a little breakfast, making a little coffee. All this mundane, boring thing everybody has to do every day of their fucking life. <laughs> well, I was going to say the poetry of day-to-day -day life, but, you know, you <laughs> say it the way you say it, I'll say it the way I say it. <laughs> but no. I can, I can see it, like, 24 boring hours. I don't know, the key, the key, the thing that kind of haunts me is, uh, is the distribution, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, getting these tapes from town to town, city to city, so that it would play continuously, because it'd have to play all the time. Yeah, digital didn't exist back then. Not service-oriented. Observation about Europe. Yeah, America is very service-oriented. I feel like Europe, I mean, I've never been there, I've never been to Europe at all, but I feel like Europe is just very direct. It's not about the service, it's about the food. I'd say I wanted to be an actress, and it'd say, you know, TV newscaster. <laughs> it was this constant conversion of my fanciful ambition into this practical money-making ventures. By the time I was in high school, I was dead set on listening to what everybody thought I should be doing with my life and just kind of doing the opposite. Yeah. If your parents never really fully contradict you about anything and, like, are basically nice and supportive, right. it makes it even harder to officially complain. I remember when uh, my mother first told me about death. My great-grandmother had just died, and my sister had just taught me how to take the garden hose and do it in such a way that it sprayed into the sun and it would make a rainbow. We all did that as kids, right? Right? And through the mist, I could see my grandmother. And I held it there for a long time. I let go of the nozzle and she disappeared. And so I run back inside and I tell my parent, sit me down and give me this big rap on how when people die, you never see them again. I knew what I'd seen. I was just glad that I saw that. I mean, I've never seen anything like that since. This conversation is really, really good. I'm enjoying it a lot. Really lucky you can have this attitude toward death. I think I'm afraid of death 24 hours a day. Oh, gosh. That's why I'm in a train right now. I could have flown to Paris, but I'm too scared. I know the statistics say na na na. I was just about to say, aren't trains a lot more dangerous than airplanes? I can't stop thinking that way. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah, a bit. <laughs> really exhausting. It would be. That would be very tiring to have that constantly on your mind. You get a fear, no? Yeah, what a drag. I wish I met you earlier, you know? I really like talking to you. Yeah, me too. And they can't really exchange, like, cell phone numbers or anything, right? <laughs> but they gotta exchange something, I hope. All right, I have an admittedly insane idea, but if I don't ask you this, it's just, uh... Here we go. You know, it's gonna haunt me the rest of my life. <laughs> I want to keep talking to you, you know? I have no idea what your situation is, but, uh... But I feel like we have some kind of, uh, connection, right? Yeah, me too. Yeah, right, well, great. So listen, here's the deal. This is what we should do. You should get off the train with me here in Vienna and come check out the town. All I know is I have to catch an Austrian Airlines flight tomorrow morning at 9.30, and I don't really have enough money for a hotel, so I was just gonna walk around, and it'd be a lot more fun if you came with me. Ah, uh, jump ahead, 10, 20 years, okay? And you're married. You start to think about all those guys you've met in your life, and what might have happened if you picked up with one of them. Well, I'm one of those guys. That's me. What this really could be is a gigantic favor to both you and your future husband to find out that you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> Let me get my bag. Yeah. I won't lie. I thought he was going to say, I'm, can I come to Paris with you? Because she starts classes next week. So that's what I thought he was going to say. But this will be fun. 
Aw, gentlemen. Also, both of them are traveling very lightly, and I appreciate that a lot. My name? Uh, it's Jesse. I'm Celine. Celine. Jesse and Celine. I'm very excited to see what adventures they're going to get up to in this very short time. <laughs> this is kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, sightsee. This is good. Okay, we're on honeymoon. Oh. Yeah, I, she got pregnant. We had to get married. Yo. Yo. <laughs> this is a play we're both in, and we would like to invite you. The actors? The part time actors for fun. It's a play. Okay, don't give too much away. They need to see the play. It starts at 21 30. Yeah. 9 30. Oh, 9 30. Oh, right. I kind of like those guys. Also, I love 24 hour time, and I only use 24 hour time, or I try to, anyway. Ever since I started using it, I just I can't go back. I can't go back. It's Q and A time. We've known each other a little while now. Here we go. Describe for me your first sexual feelings towards a person. I remember at this summer camp together, and he was a swimmer. Yeah. And to improve his times, mm -hmm. he shaved the air of his legs and arms. It's disgusting. Oh no, he was like this gorgeous dolphin. You know, and I told him, you know, you should date Emma because she has a big crush on you. And he turned to me and said, well, that's too bad, because I have a big crush on you. <laughs> it really scared the hell out of me, because I thought he was so fine. Well, then I think this is the opportune time to tell you that I happen to be a fantastic swimmer. <laughs> have you ever been in love? Yes. Next question. Uh, we need details. So we can give one details. details. I mean, yes, I have told somebody that I love them before, and I'd meant it, you know, but was it totally unselfish, giving love? Was it a beautiful thing? Not really. Been there. Been there. Tell me something that really pisses you off. I hate being told by strange men, you know, strange men in the street. Yeah. You know, like to smile, like to make them feel mood, mood. Yep, agreed. I hate that the media's, you know, they're trying to control our minds. You know, it's very subtle, but it's a new form of fascism, really. Yep. So it's my turn. It's a problem for you. You, bro. Oh, <laughs> damn, dude. Do you believe in reincarnation? Yeah. 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 I do. And even if they don't believe it in some specific way, people have some kind of notion of an eternal soul, right? 50,000 years ago, there are not even a million people on the planet. Now there's between five and six billion people on the planet, right? Now, if we all have our own like individual, unique soul, right, where do they all come from? You know, are modern souls only a fraction of the original souls? I haven't thought of that in this way before. I don't yeah, agree. I know, well, I know. It's, it's a totally scary <laughs> thought. Get off this damn train. <laughs> that was a lovely conversation. I enjoyed that a lot. It feels totally normal and not at all scripted. And I am very invested in these two. The way that I see reincarnation is I think that if you're someone that lives a full life and you die of old age and like relatively natural causes, then you're you're good. You're good and done. I think that reincarnation happens when people end up passing away earlier than they're meant to. There's even a listening booth over there. Do you want to go see if that listening booth still works? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's go in a booth. Just the two of us. I feel a kiss is coming, mayhaps. Oh, she was eyeing him. <laughs> I love this. One of you, make the move now. Jesse. Celine, you know you want to. Can you just make eye contact already? <laughs> Aw, no kiss in the listening booth. That's okay. It'll come. I visited this as a young teenager. I think it left a bigger impression on me at that time than any of the museums we went to. Is this a cemetery? Most of the people buried here, they'd washed up on the bank of the Danube. How old are these? Around the beginning of the century or so. I also love how overgrown it is. When I was a little girl, I always thought that if none of your family or friends knew you were dead, then it's like not really being dead. People can invent the best and the worst for you. She was only 13 when she died. I was that age when I first saw this. Now I'm 10 years older and she's still 13, I guess. I peg them both as like early 20s. So she's 23. I feel like he might be the same age or maybe like one or two years older. What a view. I love this. Maybe this is where the kiss will happen. That would be romantic. You got a sunset here? Seems like, um, spear. What? 
She leaned in. She's uh. moving closer. Whoa, we got the hand on the neck. Let's go. Are you trying to say you want to kiss me? I am satisfied. I don't think it really matters what generation you're born into. We still have to deal with the same old shit, but we can't really know who or, you know, what the enemy is. I don't know if there really is an enemy, you know? I mean, everybody's parents fucked them up. You know, rich <laughs> kids' parents gave them too much, poor kids. I mean, my parents are just these two people who didn't like each other very much, who uh, decided to get married and have a kid. You know, that he was really pissed off when he found out that she was pregnant with me. You know, that I was this big mistake. Ah. And I think that really shaped the way I think. I always saw the world as this place where I really wasn't meant to be. That's heartbreaking. I eventually kind of took pride in it. You know, like my life was my own doing. That's the way to see it. But I just think it's an healthy process to rebel against everything that came before. Do you know anyone who's in a happy relationship? Uh, yeah, sure. But I think they lie to each other. <laughs> yeah. My grandmother, she was married to this man, and I always thought she had a very simple, uncomplicated love life. That she spent her whole life dreaming about another man she was always in love with. Yo. People have these romantic projections they put on everything. That's true. Oh, Mr. Romantic up there in the first wall, <laughs> kiss me the sun. Oh, I love this so much. I'm having such a good time. Mm, these conversations are just so real and raw, and I love it. Look at this bomb reader. She's interesting looking, no? What? <laughs> I just mean I can't check. She's not coming over here. Yeah, she oh, is. <laughs> Avant your palm read. You have been on a journey, and you are a stranger to this place. You are interested in the power of the woman. You need to resign yourself to the awkwardness of life. Only... If you find peace within yourself, will you find true connection with others? You will be all right. He's learning. <laughs> so don't forget, you are stardust. I love that. I love that a lot. But I hope you don't take that any more seriously than some horoscope in a daily syndicated newspaper. I mean, what was it? <laughs> I am learning bullshit. I mean, that, that's way condescending. He you know? is, though. I mean, she almost didn't notice you. <laughs> it's weird. I wonder why. She went, of course you do. You know, you pay your money, you get to hear something that makes you feel good about yourself. He's <laughs> so... <laughs> are they gonna go to the play i just thought is this movie called before sunrise because we're just gonna focus on their on them being together until the morning when he gets his plane out i feel like that's maybe why it's called this <gasps> so pretty and so empty even though i reject most of the religious thing i can't help but feeling for all those people that come here lost or in pain guilt looking for some kind of answers I always think that I'm still this 13-year-old boy. Doesn't really know how to be an adult, pretending to live my life, taking notes for when I'll, you know, really have to do it. That doesn't change even when you enter your 30s. <sighs> then up there in the Ferris wheel, it was like this very old woman kissing this very young boy, right? Ow! <laughs> Would you be in Paris by now if uh, you hadn't gotten off the train with me? No, not yet. I'd probably be hanging around the airport, reading old magazines, crying in my coffee because you didn't come with me. Oh, actually, I think... I'd probably get on the train in Salzburg with someone else. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> so I'm just at... I'm having a great time. Me too. If we were around each other all the time, what do you think would be the first thing about me that would drive you mad? No, I'm not going to answer what? this question. No, I dated this girl once. What about me bugs you? Uh -huh. And so finally I said, well, you know, I uh, don't think you handle criticism too well. She flew into a rage and broke up with me. All right, that's a true story. <laughs> Something about me bugs you? I kind of didn't really like this reaction back at the palm reader you were like this rooster prick you were like a little boy whining because all the attention wasn't focused uh, on her uh, <laughs> all right listen this may I ask a question instead of just asking you for money i will ask you for a word then i will write a poem then you can pay me whatever you feel like i write in english of course mm. sure milkshake good yeah i was gonna say rooster prick but great <laughs> milkshake I gotta say i like this uh viennese variation of bum I don't know if he's a bum, though. Were we having our first fight back there? That wasn't a fight. Yeah. That was not a fight. It was like a light argument, basically. Good to poem. All right. I'm excited to hear this. Will you read it to us? Daydream delusion. Limousine eyelash. See what you mean to me. Sweet cakes and milkshakes. I want you to know what I think. Don't want you to guess anymore. You have no idea where we're going? I'll carry you. You'll carry me. That's really sweet. That's how it could be. I love that. Don't you know me by now? Thank you. Thank you. That was kind of wholesome. 
I mean, you know he probably didn't just write that. I mean, you know he wrote it, but he probably just plugs that word in. You know, whatever, milkshake. What do you mean? Nothing. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> so pessimistic. You know what drives me crazy? What? There's all these people talking about how great technology is and how it saves all this time. Mm -hmm. But what good is save time if nobody uses it? If it just turns into more busy work? I love that they're talking about this because that's a pet peeve of mine, how our huge advancements in technology have not reduced our working week since what, like the 40s or the 50s, whenever the nine to five. I could rant about that forever. I love places like this, though. We haven't talked about this yet, but are you dating anyone? No, not right now. We broke up over six months ago. Tell me. I was really disappointed. Very stupid, ugly, bad in bed, alcoholic. You know. Real charmer. No <laughs> <laughs> you left me saying I loved him too much. Are you with anyone? It's funny how we managed to avoid this subject for so long, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but now you have to tell me. He better not have someone i'll be very mad it's funny people always talk about how uh love is this totally unselfish giving thing but if you think about it you know, there's nothing more selfish I just woke up with you <laughs> what <laughs> You sound like you just got hurt. Yeah, he's kind of pessimistic about it. I feel like he's had a heartbreak. You know, I didn't come to Europe just to hang out and read Hemingway in Paris. Shocker. I saved up my money all spring to uh, fly to Madrid and hmm. spend the summer with my girlfriend, who has been on this- Your girlfriend? My ex-girlfriend, who has been on this oh. asinine art history program for the last year. He managed to avoid being alone with me for the first couple days we were there. And I stuck around for a while just to kind of let it really sink in that she wished I hadn't come. You know what's the worst thing about somebody breaking up with you? Is when you remember how little you thought about the people you broke up with, and you realize that is how little they're thinking about you. Feminism was mostly invented by men, so they could, like, fool around a little more. You know, woman, free your mind, free your body, sleep with me. We're all happy and free as long as I can <laughs> fuck as much as I can. Uh -huh. you know? Except men still don't like women that sleep around like that, so generally speaking, of course. 99 women on the island and only one man in a year, you'd have the possibility of 99 babies. Right. But if you have an island with 99 men and only one woman, in a year, you have the possibility of only one baby. Exactly. Sure. I think there will be only, like, maybe 43 men left. Because they would have killed each other, you know, trying to fuck this poor woman, you know? <laughs> and you know what? I don't think woman really wants to destroy men. And if, even if they want to, they don't, they don't succeed, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure even, you know, men are destroying women or able, capable of destroying women much more than women. Well, anyway, it's depressing. I mean... You want to stop talking about this? Yeah, um, okay. yeah I hate well. it. There really is no end to it. Everything that's interesting costs a little bit of money. And the women of our... <laughs> Those two dudes on the left. Damn. Men are lucky we don't bite off their head after mating. <laughs> Certain insects do that, you know, like spiders and stuff. We at least let you live. What are you complaining about? <laughs> See, you're official. Talking seriously here. Loving someone and being loved means so much to me. Yeah. But isn't everything we're doing in life a way to be loved a little more? I don't know. Social connection is very Sometimes important to us biologically. I dream about being a good father and a good husband. But then other times it seems silly, like it would uh, ruin my whole life. I feel that. I think I'd rather die knowing that I was really good at something and then that I'd just been in a nice, caring relationship. I feel the opposite. I'd rather be known for my relationships with people and not for achievements. You know, I believe if there's any kind of God, it wouldn't be in any of us. But just this little space in between. If there's any kind of magic in this world, it must be in the attempt of understanding someone sharing something. I love that they're in some random side street in Vienna, just sitting on a pile of pallets, having a conversation like this. So awesome. In New York, this person would be out of a job. Yeah, well, you're in a different country, my guy. I love that they're focusing on different tables of people. Now I'm gonna call my best friend in Paris, who I'm supposed to have lunch with in eight hours. Dring, dring. Lunch in eight hours, that means it must be like very, very early in the morning. I met a guy on the train and I got off with him in Vienna. We're still there. Are you crazy? <laughs> Why'd you get off the train with him? He convinced me. I was ready to get off the train with him after talking to him a short while. Aww. He has beautiful blue eyes, nice pink lips. I like to feel his eyes on me when I look away. He kind of kisses like an adolescent. <laughs> it's so cute. What? <laughs> yeah, we kissed. <laughs> it was so adorable. I think he's crazy about you. Really? I mean, I've known you a long time, and I got a good feeling. 
You gonna see him again? This is really wholesome. We haven't talked about that yet. Okay, it's your turn. You call your friend. I've never done this before and now I want to. Hi, dude. What's up? <laughs> uh... Love her accent. I met somebody on my last night in Europe. Can you believe that? Well, she was literally a Botticelli angel telling me that everything was gonna be okay. She didn't like me much at first. She's super smart, very passionate, um, and I was so unsure of myself. No, I'm sure she was not judging you. Us men are so stupid. We don't understand anything about women. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. All our time together shouldn't officially be happening. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's why this feels so otherworldly. It was spontaneous and unplanned. Everything is so finite. I mean, but, but don't you think that's what makes our time and specific moments so important? Yeah, I know. It's the same for us tonight, though. After tomorrow morning, we're probably never gonna see each other again, right? What do you think? Gosh, I don't know. Totally understand. Right, I, I need to imagine. make you fly. You know, you'd hate to fly, right? I mean, it's not so bad if tonight is our only night, right? Why do you think everybody thinks relationships are supposed to last forever anyway? Yeah, why? It's stupid. Tonight's our only night. Maybe it will be. It's the only way now. End it on a happy note and just have that memory for the rest of your life. We'll just make tonight great. It's depressing now. We well, can say goodbye now. Now I wouldn't have to worry about it in the morning. <laughs> Alpha. Later. Hmm, now I don't know how this movie is going to end. Are they going to hold to that and stick with tonight being the only night and that's it? Or are they going to realize that they don't want this night to be the only night? All right, so here's the plan, right? You're going to grab the glasses and I'm going to get the wine. Red wine. Red wine. I love how many places they're hitting up. This would be me. Just go to all the places. Well, this is our only night together. She wants a bottle of red wine. I don't have any money. And I would promise to send you the money and you'd be making our night complete. Your hand? For the greatest night in your life. <laughs> Thank you very much. Kind of had a feeling they were going to go to a random park somewhere just to lay in the grass. Mm, so romantic. But I'm happy to be with you. Cute. This is a great morning. It is a great morning. You know, I've never um, gone to the movies when I wasn't there in the audience. I think that's why so many people hate themselves. Seriously. It's just they are sick to death of being around themselves. Being with you, uh, it's made me feel like I was somebody else. Oh. Do you know what I want? To be kissed. Well, I can do that. I don't think we should sleep together. I mean, I want to, but... Since we're never going to see each other again, you don't make me feel bad. I wonder who else you're with. I'll miss you. Let's see each other again. No, I don't want you to break out, uh, <laughs> just so you can get laid. <laughs> I think we should. No, then it's like some male fantasy. Meet a French girl on a train, fuck her, and never see her again. Great evening to just have been for that. Okay. It's valid. Okay. okay. We don't have to have sex. It's not a big deal. Of to never see you again or to marry you. Mm -hmm. I would marry you. And maybe that's a lot of romantic bullshit, but people have gotten married for a lot less. Decided I wanted to sleep with you when we got off the train. Now that we've talked so much, I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just what every man wants to hear. <laughs> Why do I make everything so complicated? We're human. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We make things complicated. Men and women alike. Blue skies, sunrise. So did they or didn't they is now my question. Because I feel like that could have gone either way. And maybe we won't know and that's the point. This is adorable. <sighs> Got like a permanent smile on my face this whole movie. I think I can really fall in love when I know everything about someone. Knowing the exact story you tell in a given situation. I'm sure that's when I know I'm really in love. Yeah. And when the things that may annoy you just end up becoming these quirks that make them really charming. Because not everyone is perfect. Everyone is going to have mannerisms or little flaws about them that, you know, could be a big turnoff for other people. Yeah, but if it's not a turnoff for you and you we find it kind of charming... Play. Play. Then uh, yeah. I was just going to say y'all didn't go to that play <laughs> too busy bar hopping, but I think they had more fun during a play. You can't really talk, so it wasn't going to be a good 
a situation for them, I feel. You gotta put yourself in situations where you can talk all the time. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I should get on this one. Right here? You wanna get on that? Right. Yeah. Oh boy. The hardest part. I oh no. Goodbyes are so hard. I have a great life. <laughs> I've done with everything you're gonna do. You all know? right, all right. Work Good luck hard. with school and all that. Oh, I hate this. Listen. Listen, you know all this bullshit we're talking about, about not seeing each other again? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. You don't either. I was I waiting for you to say something. <laughs> Why didn't you say something? I was afraid maybe you didn't want to say something. All right, all right. Well, listen, what do, you, what do you want to do? Maybe we should meet here in five years or something. All right, all right. Five, <laughs> five years. That's a long time. <laughs> it's awful. It's like a sociological experiment. How about six months? Six months? Yeah. Six months from now, last night. Um, uh, yeah, uh, last night. Six months from okay. last night, which was... Uh, uh, June 16th, so, uh, track nine, uh, six months from now at six o'clock at night. Wow. <laughs> like that, all right? But I'm gonna be here. <laughs> okay, me too. All right. Oh my gosh. Just show up six months from now at that very spot. <laughs> Later. I love that it's showing all the locations that they had been to. They did a lot in such a short time together. <gasps> did they leave the bottle and the glasses in the park? Y'all. They're both just thinking of each other. The end? Definitely the end. So that was my reaction to Before Sunrise. This movie is a five out of five for me. It's perfection. I love that this movie was if we were following real people, as if we were a fly on the wall, watching and listening to their interactions and connection in this very short time they had together. There are couples in my life that have met on trains and planes while being in another country, and after such a short time together, they devoted to make it work, and these couples are still together years later. One of the couples has been together for, I think, 14 or 15 years now. And to me, there is something just so romantic about that. I am a firm believer that I think it's really difficult to find someone that you have a super strong connection with in your immediate area. This world is so big, filled with so many people, and I just think that there's such a strong chance that the person in the world that you can have the strongest connection with is most likely not anywhere physically near you. And there is something very charming and exciting, but also depressing about that. For me, this movie kind of brought up some memories about this guy from my past almost a decade ago. He was a man that was always on the train with me every morning downtown to start the workday. I never saw him in the afternoons. It was always first thing in the morning. I always got on the train at the same time every day and I always picked the same car and so did he. So we were always on the same train together every morning for a couple months, I think. We exchanged glances at each other all the time, but in those two months, we never said a single word to each other. But after time, I always wanted to introduce myself to him and give him my number. So there was this one day where I like spent the 10 minute train ride working up to it. I had prepared a business card where I had written my cell phone number on it and I was gonna do it. I was gonna give it to him, introduce myself, and ask to meet up for a coffee or something like that. Despite psyching myself up and having the business card in my hand, in my pocket, ready to give, we stopped at our stop, he got off the train, I followed him, and that was it. I didn't, I took it out. I didn't give it to him. I didn't say a word. And I still regret that to this day because shortly after that, I never saw him again. Maybe his work schedule changed. Maybe he got a new job. Maybe he moved to a new city. I'll never know. And I don't even know his name, but I do not forget what he looks like. The start of this movie kind of reminded me of that a bit, except Jesse and Celine started talking nearly immediately. I do think the listening booth scene reminded me a lot of that experience, except for the fact that we were never that close to each other physically. And we also never had this tension and experience of the previous couple hours of conversation like looming over us. While we're on the topic of the listening booth scene, that was 1000% my favorite scene in this movie, my favorite moment. I loved it so, so much. Don't get me wrong, there were so many great conversations and so many great moments in this movie, but the charm of the listening booth scene is how they were looking at each other but not wanting the other person to know that they were looking at them and always making sure to look away just before 
before the other person turned to look at them. I've been there so many times in my life and that scene just really brought me back to that feeling. That feeling of just wanting to really stare at someone and just look at them. And I mean really look at them. You watch their breath, you see their pores on their face, maybe you notice a small scar on their face and start wondering how they got it. You focus on how their ear is shaped, you notice how short or how long their eyelashes are, if their lips are chapped. You wonder what is going on in their mind as they're looking at whatever they're looking at. And then the moment that you look away because now you know they're doing the same to you, you decide to just focus on something in the distance. You notice a weird speck in the wall or a snag in the carpet. And you're not focusing on those things because now your brain is wondering what parts of you they're focusing on and what is going through their mind. And all you can think about is how kissing them in such an intimate space might feel. And that's all you can think about. And all of it is just such a great moment to be in. And the one thing that I adore about this movie is how they don't explicitly confirm whether Jesse and Celine had sex or not in the park. I appreciate that that's kind of left up to the viewer to decide because when they wake up and start walking again, I mean, you can look at Celine's hair, the messy hair that she has, and the messy hair on Jesse, and you can kind of decide for yourself, is that because they decided to go all the way or is it because they just cuddled a lot and maybe slept for a couple hours and it's just bedhead? I think for me personally, I'm gonna go with they didn't go all the way. And the reason why is because I think there's just something very charming about spending, what, 12 hours with someone and deciding that you're gonna get together in another six months from now. I think there's something just very charming and special about a couple that has a very strong personal and intimate connection with one another, but they leave something to still be desired. I think it's more special for them to have that six months apart. It's the time to like yearn and miss each other. And then when they get together in December, December 16th, right? December 16th, then that flame will be reignited and they'll still have new experiences together to look forward to. You know, distance makes the heart grow fonder something. As for Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy's performances, 10 out of 10. I adored them both as these characters. I think that they brought so much reality and specialness to both Jesse and Celine. They have great chemistry and I just love them. I really don't have to do a deep dive on their performances or anything because I just, I really, really enjoyed this and I think that they worked really well together. The conversations in this movie I could listen to over and over and over again and just adore and love every single time. They remind me of conversations I've had many times with people very close to me, both in the romantic way and not. I really enjoyed seeing them talk about some deeper topics and just really like dive into a bunch of heavy stuff. Through these conversations, we got to see that Celine is definitely more optimistic about life. She's kind of a romantic and we see that Jesse is more on the cynical side. He's got some pessimism in him, but also realistic a lot of the time too. To me, I just really enjoy that balance. I feel like Celine can help lift Jesse up in moments where she's feeling a bunch of optimism and he's not. And then at the same time, I feel like in certain instances, Jesse can kind of bring Celine back down to reality with a little bit more pessimism. <laughs> I just love and adore that so much. The way that this movie was filmed was an absolute joy to watch and experience. And this movie was very, very dialogue heavy. I'm already kind of stressed about how I'm gonna edit this movie. <laughs> But again, if you want to see the full length reaction, you know where to find it on Patreon. Before Sunrise has now been added to my list of comfort movies, and I'm so happy for that. And I know at the start of this video, I said, let me know in the comments if I should watch the other two. I don't think you have to worry about that anymore. I definitely want to watch these other two movies and experience them, especially if they are set up like this one. I haven't looked into them, so I don't know if people consider this one their favorite or maybe one of the other two, but I've decided for myself that I definitely want to watch them and give them a go and see what I think about them, and I'm very excited to do that. As always, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this movie. What is your favorite scene? What is your favorite conversation? I would love to know. Thank you so much for spending the time to watch along to this reaction with me. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please click here to do so, and make sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future reactions and live streams. And if you wanna continue watching one of my reaction videos, please click over here to do so. Thank you, thank you so, so much, and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.